Uh, is titled Good Friday and Easter Doctrines of Error. Good Friday and Easter Doctrines of Error. That's the one we're going to start out with. See, this is something, sisters and brothers, that the world made the early people when the Gentiles tried to deal with this. Because the Gentiles did not know what the Lord had given Israel, and they didn't have any affiliation with, with Israel. They did not understand the Lord's Sabbath days. And because they didn't understand the Lord's Sabbath days, they made a grave error, and that is the death and resurrection of Jesus. Had they known, then this would not, you would not have a Good Friday in an Easter Sunday morning. Now, you know, when I was younger, I used to be angry at them. But then as I got older, the Lord showed me these are doctrines of errors. So what do you do? You don't get up, you don't confuse, uh, uh, accuse, you don't beat up on people. You just show them the error. Now, whether they accept it or not, that's between them and God. So we're going to show you how it is that you come up with first with the Lord dying on Good Friday. We're going to start this in St. John, the 19th chapter. That's why we call ourselves the Bible study class. You have to stick with the Bible, sister and brother. Because if you don't deal with the Bible, you're going to get off in interpretation. And if you get off in interpretation, you're going to join the people that are making error. Sooner or later, this thing has to be fixed. Sooner or later. You just cannot continue to make error after error after error. Now, we're going to start this at <coughs> verse 17. St. John, the 19th chapter. And we're going to start this at verse 17. In fact, we're going to do a little blackboard work. We can roll that uh, curtain back because we're going to... Get a little particular today. Because you cannot defend an error. Facts you can defend. In fact, facts defend themselves. But an error cannot is indefensible. You can't do nothing about it. Verse 17, go ahead. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, uh -huh. which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. Now, this is Jesus. When they was taken to the crucified, and he was bearing his own cross. Go, go ahead. Where they crucified him, uh -huh. and two other with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. Now, I'm letting you know that Jesus was crucified in the midst of two guys. But now, let's see what happened after they had crucified these guys and Jesus. Skip down to verse 31. Verse 31. Verse 31 and read it. The Jews, therefore, because it was a preparation uh -huh. that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. Go ahead. For the Sabbath day was in high day. Uh -huh. But so Pilate that their legs might be broken. Now that was the error right here. Right here. Because they said the next, next day was a preparation. And they didn't want the bodies to be on the cross at the, on the Sabbath day. And no, but nobody paid that other little uh, parenthesis there. For that was a high Sabbath day. So what makes this particular Sabbath day that we are on higher than the one we had last week and the one that we're going to have next week? Nobody bothered to ask the question, why is it that they made on the Sabbath day? Like I saw a uh, brother I was talking to one time, and he was telling me he agreed that Jesus died on Good Friday. I said, why is that? Well, you know, because this is the next day was a Sabbath day. I said, then I'm going to show you that there are seven annual Sabbath days. Jesus died a day before the Sabbath day, but that day was not the weekly Sabbath day. Let's run it down a little bit. Let's go into Genesis, uh, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. <coughs> Leviticus chapter 23. See, the Lord had, see, this is what happens when errors are made, and then somebody tell you that you are a New Testament Christian, now you can't go back in the Old Testament and find the error. But what they don't understand is that you might be a New Testament Christian, but the God of the New Testament is also the God of the Old Testament. We can show you, and it is written in more than one place, that you ain't never dealt with nobody but Jesus. Before Jesus came, his name, they call him Yahweh. Some of them call him uh, uh, Jehovah. Have some brothers now call him, you know, depending on Yahweh. Well, see, that's the father. I heard a brother say that last night. So wait a minute. No matter what you call this guy, he is not the father. And I can show you that by the time we see the father, we, if we are in good shape, you can't be in bad shape because you will have made the change then. But anyway, we're going to start this 23 and 1. 
23 and 1. Because this error, this error was made because the people, the Gentiles, did not understand the holidays that God gave Israel. They had the Lord's holy days, not Israel. Because they said, well, them the Jews' holidays. They see it right now. Now we got the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets coming up. Gentiles don't know nothing about that, and the world don't know, because Gentiles in charge now. In fact, a Gentile don't even know what a Gentile is. <laughs> so we got, you know, I'm talking about, I'm talking about this thing. Is the, the mistakes are so deep until you have to really, like I, like I said, with babies, potty trained people, take them back to the common denomination. Verse 1, 23 and 1. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Go ahead. Concerning the feast of the Lord, uh -huh. which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feast. You notice it didn't say feast of the Jews here? It's feast of the Lord, sisters and brothers. Feast of the Lord. The Lord God of Israel is the God of every man, woman, and child on this planet. I don't care whether you want him to be or not. Because he's going to be the God that saved you, and if you come against him, he's going to be the God that put you in the lake of fire. Either way, he is your God. So now these are the feasts of the Lord. So we're going to deal with the first one. Skip down, uh, skip down to uh, verse 6. This is the first one. Verse 6. Go ahead and read. And on the 15th day of the same month uh -huh. is a feast of unleavened bread. Now this is the feast of unleavened bread, sisters and brother. I'm just going to do a, because uh, you know my, my, my spelling stinks, so I ain't going to let y'all get to laugh at me today. <laughs> so this is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Go ahead and read. Unto the Lord. Uh-huh. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Go ahead. In the first day. Uh-huh. Ye shall have a holy convocation. Go ahead. And on the first day. That is the Sabbath day, your holy convocation. Go ahead and read. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Uh-huh. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. Go ahead. And the seventh day is an holy convocation. And also, the seventh day is a holy convocation. So we got, a, got two here, don't we? Both of these are two Sabbath days. Go ahead and read. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Uh-huh. Nine. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, uh -huh. When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, Go ahead. And shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priests. Now, now this is talking about reaping the harvest. This re I'm going to show you later on. This represents resurrection, sisters and brothers. But you bring a sheaf of it to the priests. Go ahead and read. Eleven. And he shall wave the sheep before the Lord uh -huh. to be accepted for you. Go ahead. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Now, he's going to uh, wave it tomorrow after the Sabbath day. But we're not dealing with that right now. We're going to get back to it. Go ahead and read. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheep and he lamb without blemish uh -huh. of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Now, but there's one thing I want you to know. This, way, this he lamb, without blemish, we know that that represents Jesus. Of the first year, that represents he is the firstborn. But before you can eat any of this thing, something has to happen. Skip down to verse 14. Verse 14, and go ahead. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, uh -huh. nor green ears, until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. Go ahead. It shall be a statue forever. Throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Now, before you can eat any of that crop, you have to go and get the first fruit of the crop. Then you have to sacrifice a he lamb without blemish, the firstborn, and, and, and wave them before the Lord before anybody can eat. That's the whole nation, sisters and brothers, because it have a great significance. Go ahead and read. 15. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, uh -huh. from the day that ye bought the sheaf of the wave offering. Go ahead. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Now you're going to do seven Sabbaths. This is how you come up with a, with no, uh, and you add one more day. Go ahead and read. 16. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath uh -huh. shall ye number 50 days. You're going to number 50 days. That's why Pentecost came from, because 50 merely means Pentecost. Ain't nothing holy about it. That don't mean speaking an unknown language. It merely means 50 days. 
Now, what is, let's skip down to verse 21. Verse 21. Verse 21 and read it. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Uh-huh. Ye shall do no sober work therein. Now, this is another holy day, day of Pentecost. But it is a holy day unto you. So that's three right there. Did you finish that? It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generation. That means as long as there is a baby born, this day has to be observed, sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. As long as one is born. Now, skip down to verse 23, and we're going to pick up another one. Verse 23. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Go ahead. In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, uh -huh. shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. Okay, memorial of blowing of trumpets. That represents the seven trumpets, sisters and brothers. So this is a Sabbath also. So this is four here. What verse was that? We had 25. Go ahead and read. Ye shall do no servile work therein, uh -huh. but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now you notice that you have to always, on these days, sisters and brothers, on these days, you always do no servile work in that day. In other words, you don't go to your job. The Lord said it so. Now what verse are we? 26. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, Go ahead. there shall be a day of atonement. Uh -huh. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. Now, another day, day of atonement. This is another holy gathering. It shall be a holy convocation unto you. That's his five. Go ahead and read. And ye shall afflict your souls uh -huh. and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now he said afflict your soul. That don't mean hit yourself in the head with a hammer now. <laughs> I mean you, you're supposed to fast this day. All the stuff that you have, you're supposed to fast. If, if, if you don't have a medical problem, I always tell people if you're a diabetic and you have to have something, we don't want you going to a diabetic seizure. God know about it. So if the Lord wants you to do it, he can heal you, then you can do it. However, you're supposed to eat no food, drink no water, and to those people that's killing themselves with cigarettes, you ain't supposed to smoke one of them either. <laughs> Even on the regular Sabbath, for because it's kindling the fire. So he said, you shall afflict your souls. Did you finish that 27 verse? Yes, sir. Skip down to verse 32 and go ahead. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, uh -huh. and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at evening. From even unto evening shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. So now, that's another Sabbath. Now, right now we got five, don't we? Now, let's skip right on down to the 33rd chapter of Leviticus. Leviticus 33. Leviticus, I'm sorry, th 23rd chapter, I'm sorry, verse 33. Leviticus 23 and verse 33. That's why I tell people, if you understand this 23rd chapter of Leviticus, you understand the plan of God. He laid it all in front of you. We're going to learn something today. Verse 20, uh, 33, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Go ahead. The fifteenth day of this seventh month uh -huh. shall be the feast of tabernacles. Now, the next one is the tabernacle. That's all right. That's spelled right. I don't care about your laughing. Okay, we're going to put this on. This is a sixth day. Go ahead and read. 34. For seven days unto the Lord. Uh-huh. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. Now, remember now, the, Sabbath, the tabernacle is only seven days, sisters and brothers. Don't get that confused. He said seven days. You cannot get eight, uh, 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 eight out of seven. You can only get seven out of seven. So you, flick your, so you are supposed to celebrate, have a feast of the Lord. Go ahead and read. 35. On uh -huh. the first day shall be in holy convocation. The Go ahead. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Uh -huh. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Go ahead. On the eighth day shall be in holy convocation unto you. Now the eighth day, that's another day, sisters and brothers, not a part of tabernacle. In fact, that is the day after the Sabbath day. 
So we're going to call, we just call this the eighth day. Why is it that we don't have a name for that? It's because that's somewhere else. We're going to find out where it is. So now, you, uh, and so this is, the, what verse was that? We're in the middle of 36. Finish that. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Uh -huh. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no serve our work therein. And, and all of these, sisters and brothers, the same thing. Every one of them are a solemn assembly. Every one. Skip down to verse 39. Verse 39. And read it. Also on the 15th day of the seventh month, uh -huh. when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, Go ahead. ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Uh -huh. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. Go ahead. And on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Now you notice they're all the same. Keep a feast to the Lord. On the first day going to be a uh, Sabbath, and on the eighth day going to be a Sabbath. So all of these, sisters and brothers, are Sabbath days. That's why I said I want to take my time and just deal with this because this is an error. And so the eighth day, Sabbath, a tabernacle, Sabbath day, and a Sabbath day. So we have seven Sabbath days, don't we? One, two, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Six and seven. Now, this is what error was made. The Gentiles did not understand that Israel had seven Sabbath days. So quite naturally, when they said that the Lord was crucified a day before the Sabbath day, hey, it must be Friday. And the whole world ran with it, sisters and brothers. Now let's go back up to the fifth chapter of Leviticus, the fifth verse, rather. Leviticus 23 and verse 5. Now we're going to bring in the Passover. 23 and verse 5. 23 and 5. Okay, read it. In the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. Now, the Lord have a time for that. On the 14th day, we got the Passover here. We're going to put it over here. Okay, that's the 14th day. I'm running out of room here. See, the Passover had to be when the Passover had to be. Go ahead and read. Six. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Uh-huh. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Uh-huh. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no serve our work therein. Now, that is the Sabbath day that Jesus died. Now, what do we do with the Passover? We're going to move the Passover here, and we're going to put the Passover up here. And what day is on that? That is on the 14th day. Okay. Now, what day, on, what day was the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread? Read it. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Now, this is the 15th day. That's where the error was made, sisters and brothers. They didn't understand that they didn't have these seven annual Sabbath days. And they didn't. So now Jesus was killed a day before the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Unleavened Bread, sisters and brothers, actually represent a lack of sin. So when Jesus died and you was under the blood, your sin was white. But that had to come after the Passover. It could not come before. Now let's go in, in the Exodus, the 12th chapter, and look at it. Exodus chapter 12. Because this is the advantage of reading all of the Bible instead of reading some of it. And this is the advantage of being taught instead of being preached at. Because you have to work out your own salvation. 
I can only teach you how, but I can't save you. My job is to get me through the door, and so I figure if I get a lot of y'all on the path to getting yourself through the door, God might overlook my shortcoming. <laughs> and I got plenty up. So now let's start it at verse 1, 12 and 1. 12 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, Go ahead. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Uh -huh. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Go ahead. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb. Go ahead. According to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Now, he said, don't you take a lamb. Everyone, according to the house, go ahead and read. And if the household be too little for the lamb, uh -huh. let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the soul. Go ahead. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Go ahead. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Uh -huh. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. So your lamb had to be without blemish, shouldn't have no flaws. In other words, because these represent blemishes, represent sin, sisters and brothers. And it had to be of the first year, a male of the first year. Mm -hmm. That is important. So the Lord just didn't put this down here because he wanted to use space. Go ahead and read. Six. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Uh -huh. And the whole, con whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now, and you could not kill it any time. You know, like when we had the meat store, them guys used to come over there and say, you got some lamb? Yeah, I got some lamb. I was in business around the Passover. You understand? But whether it was male or the first year, I didn't know. Whether it had blood, it could have been born with one foot missing. I didn't know, but I was in the business. They didn't come over there for me to preach to them, so I sold them some lamb. Some of them used to, you got some blood? I started to sell them some chicken blood, but then I... I said, I better not get too crazy because I know better. Maybe the Lord will deal with me. You understand? <laughs> but if you're going to keep the Passover, you have to do it right now. I tell people all the time, if you're going to do wrong, learn how to do wrong right. So they had to get them a female lamb. And they had the first male that she had, they had to take this male, and they had to examine this male. And he didn't have no Flaw. Now they couldn't put him up on any day. They had to wait till the 10th day of the month to put him up. Then on the 14th day, then that's when they kill the lamb. Then you had to get the blood of that lamb. You couldn't say you got some blood. Of that particular lamb that you kill and put on the side post and over your door post. That lamb, sisters and brothers, if you're going to do wrong, that's the way to do wrong. That's the right way to do it. But you have a problem in some of these apartment buildings. Even some of these communities, they see you putting blood over your house, the door to your own house. Don't you think they're going to do to you? But anyway, what verse was that? We had seven. He said, now, nah, go ahead and read. Verse seven, go ahead. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house. Go ahead. Wherein they shall eat it. Now, you got to get that blood, and you got to put it over your door post because the blood is what's going to make the difference. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 12, and go ahead. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, uh -huh. and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, go ahead. both man and beast. Uh -huh. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Because the Lord said, now I'm going to pass through Egypt this night, and I'm going to smite the firstborn of every man and beast in the land. Because I'm the Lord. Who's going to stop me? Go ahead and read. 13. And the blood shall be to you. For a token upon the houses where you are. He said, this blood going to be to a token on the house. Don't have nothing to do with who's out of the blood. If you had faith enough to put the blood over your doorpost, then you had faith enough to be saved, sister. Well, this is what I like about this God that I serve. The day that you start believing, that's the first step to salvation. Yes, sir. All the wrong, all the evil that you committed, if you have truly repented, he tell you in Ezekiel, he won't even mention it to you. So now this blood should be a token on that doorpost of that house. Go ahead and read. 13. 
And when I see the blood, uh -huh. I will pass over you. Uh -huh. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. He said, now when I see the blood, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to pass over that house, sister and brother. That's what the word means, pass over. That's why I can't understand why a true Christian don't understand the Passover. Being that every one of us is going to have to go under the blood to be saved. If you're a true Christian, this will jump out on you like an animal. Boy, look, I, didn't, oh, I see now what's going on. Passover. Go ahead and read. 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Uh -huh. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Go ahead. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. I mean, you, every generation that's born, this is supposed to be kept. Why is the Passover being kept nowadays? Think about it. Don't nobody even holler nobody. But the Lord said, you're supposed to keep this. Well, you see, Brother Bowie said that to the Jews. I'm going to tell you something. He said it all to the Israelites. Don't you know Moses was an Israelite? Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, all of them was Israelite. Don't you know that Peter was an Israelite? Paul was an Israelite? The 12 apostles was Israelite? Jesus was an Israelite. So who is it that the message is coming to them? Coming to us, and we are supposed to teach all the rest of the sons of Adam. That's the protocol. That's why I hear people talk crazy. You understand what I'm saying? Well, that's for the Jews. Well, he gave everything to the Jews. I didn't see nowhere where Jesus walked among the Gentiles. He never left Israel. He didn't go to Rome, didn't go to Germany, <laughs> and didn't go to Greece. He gave it to Israelites. <clears throat> so now, when he said throughout your generation, this is the generation of every nation that have a child. What verse are we? 15. Go ahead. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread, even the first now, day. Now, I'm going to show you something now. You would miss this if you didn't pay no attention. Back up to the 14th verse and read it. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Uh-huh. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Uh-huh. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Now, that's the Passover, sister and brother. What people don't know is that the Passover is a feast also. You have to eat something. That's before Jesus came and died, you ate the lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. But when Jesus came, you still eat the bread and the wine. You still have to, because it is a feast, sister and brother. And there's a reason why no meat is on that diet. But then we can't teach everything in one day. So the whole thing is, he says a feast forever, but go ahead and read, and I go into the next verse. 15. Uh-huh. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Oh, so now this is what we have here now. We done went somewhere else, didn't we? We already had a feast, the Passover feast, for one day. Now we go into the feast of unleavened bread, which is on the 15th day. They all come, they come together every time. You can't have one, you can't have the Passover without the first day of unleavened bread, which is the Sabbath day. You have to have them in order. What verse are we? 15. Go ahead. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Uh -huh. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. Go ahead. For whosoever eat of leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Uh huh. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation. Uh huh. And in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation Go to ahead. you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat that only may be done of you. Now look, it's some of these are holy days, Sabbath days, sister and brother. So the Passover here, feast of Passover come first, then the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread come directly after. Feast of Unleavened Bread is a Sabbath day. The Passover is not. I saw the preacher in California try to say the Passover is a, uh, a Sabbath day. But then when he got to the eighth day, he had a numbers problem. <laughs> he had him eight Sabbath days. Instead of seven. God, when, when, you go, when the guy go to eight with you, that's somewhere else. We're going to have a peek at it before we get out of here. Now look, let's go into Mark now, the 14th chapter. Mark, the 14th chapter. Because as you're going to serve God, sisters and brothers, serve him, right? I tell people all the time, this life here is too short for you to put too much stock in it. 
you better prepare for the life that's to come because that's forever. And you got to decide where you want to live forever at. On the good side of the kingdom or on the bad side of the kingdom. Not in Satan's kingdom. Satan ain't got no kingdom. Remember, the lake of fire was made for him and his angels. Not for him to have a domain. They was made to barbecue him. And what he going to do is get you in the barbecue with him. That old thing, misery love company, when it comes to Satan, that is correct. You understand? He know he's in trouble. So he said, I'm going to take all, he, he want to take the whole creation with him. <clears throat> Hopefully, if you get the whole creation in the fire, God will reconsider. So, well, I give everybody a second chance. It ain't going to happen like that. Satan cannot beat his creator. Now, on the 14th day, I mean, so on uh, Mark, the 14th chapter, let's see what time is getting ready to happen now. Mark 14, and let's start at verse 1. Mark 14 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. After two days was a feast. Of, pa of the Passover. After two days was the feast of the Passover. That's one. Go ahead and read. And of unleavened bread. And the feast of unleavened bread. They all come together because the unleavened bread is a Sabbath day. Go ahead and read. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. Now they kept plotting how they can kill Jesus. Go ahead and read. But they said, not on the feast day, uh -huh. lest there be an uproar of the people. Now why not on the feast day? That was talking about on the house Sabbath because they couldn't do nothing. Now, you're going to jump up and you're going to kill the Lord on the Sabbath day? You got your problem here. So they had to jump up and say, well, okay, then well, let's kill him a day before the feast day. We ain't going to run all that. We know it is because it's Jesus, the one that died. So now, let's show you. Now, they killed him the day before the feast day, which is the first day of unleavened bread. Now, let's go to John now, the 19th chapter. But I just want to let you know, see, most people misunderstand that for years I didn't understand. I thought they were making a mistake when they said, well, you know, when the Feast of Passover, Feast of Passover, finally the Lord caused me to understand that. So wait a minute. That's what it is, a Feast of Passover. And once I understood that, then I understood the eight-day feast too. The Lord in this thing, the way it starts. But then that's another lesson. St. John. 19 chapter, John 19 chapter. Now remember now, they wanted him off the cross because they knew the next day was a high day. John 19, and we're going to start reading at verse 38. John the 19th chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 38. 19 and 38. Because here's some guys. Now, he has some, he had, you know, you always have some secret uh, uh, servant in every generation. Verse 38, go ahead. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Uh huh. And Pilate gave him leave. Go ahead. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. Now, this guy wanted to go. This is a rich, rich guy. He wanted to take, uh, 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 get Jesus and bury him. Go ahead and read. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Uh-huh. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in a linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now they took him and they wound him up so they could bury him. Go ahead and read. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. Uh-huh. There laid they Jesus, therefore because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was not at hand. Now they might have buried him somewhere else, but they had to hurry up and get him in the ground because sun was going down. You understand? So they had to get him and off the cross before sundown and find him buried. So this God was close to where they had crucified him. This is why. But what day was he crucified on? On the Passover, sisters and brothers. Why was Jesus crucified on the Passover? Let's go and find out. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. These things the Lord had written here so we would get a better understanding of what's going on. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 7. 1 Corinthians 5, 
and verse 7. Verse 7. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. Okay, read. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, uh -huh. that ye may be a new lump. Go ahead. As ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. See, leaven is sin, sisters and brothers. And the Lord said, purge out that old sin and be a new lump. One that don't sin no more because Christ, our Passover, have been sacrificed for us. Yes. Sisters and brothers, the, Jesus is the Passover. It is his blood yes. that the Father's going to see and you're going to be hid under and that he's going to pass over your sin. That's how you're going to get salvation. That's why I say a true Christian understand Passover yes. because we are all dependent on the blood of Jesus because there ain't nobody clean. That's why Jesus was called the Holy One of Israel. So now, you don't understand the Passover? You need to go back to school. So now, we have found out why. We have found out why he was crucified on Friday. Because they thought they didn't know about these seven Sabbath days. Now, I'm going to do some erasing here. Now, we're going to go and we're going to show you now how this could not have been, even if you didn't understand. It simply could not have been, sisters and brothers. Let's go into Matthew, the 12th chapter. I want to show you this. Sometimes you can I make your statement, you know, I might not know what is all the time, but I know what ain't. That's why I was in the parking. I was in the parking lot there uh, uh, Thursday or Friday. I don't forget what day I was standing out there. And a guy came along. Yeah, I see you on TV. Are you the one on TV? I said, Yeah, I'm him. I'm him. I said, Yep, I'm him. You don't sound like that on TV. I said, I'm not on TV. You different on TV than you are now. I said, uh-huh. <laughs> he, he just walked on. <laughs> you see, because preachers ain't supposed to be common people. Somebody done gave that big forest. You know, preachers are so much. If you're anything at all, you're serving of God, and you can't be no more. And that should be sufficient. That's all of it. Now, Jesus... They wanted a sign that Jesus was the Christ, or the Messiah, or the anointed one. See, these Jews here, when they asked the question, they asked questions with some understanding. They know what they was asking. And now, they knew that the Messiah was supposed to come, but they wanted a sign that he was supposed to come. We're going to start at verse 38. Matthew 12 and verse 38. So this is what people don't pay no attention to what Jesus said. But all of them are Christian. Christian mean Christ like, but you don't say nothing he said. Tell people all the time, show me one time where Jesus went to the synagogue on the first day of the week. Not twice, one time. Show me one time where the Jews of Paul them held service on the first day of the week. One time. Well, you know, Paul told them to collect your money on the first day of the week. Look, you collect money on Wednesday. Does that make it a Sabbath day? He said, I want this stuff to be out the way. So when I come, I don't want you running around trying to get money. I'm coming to preach. And I'm going to get this money that y'all collect for the poor saints, and I'm just going to grab it when I get through and move on. That's what he's telling these people. Yes, sir. Well, Paul broke bread on the, on the first day of the week. Every day that he ate, he broke bread. <laughs> so I'm just telling you all this foolishness that they're giving you to try to establish a lie. Yes. See, because the death and resurrection of death, that's where you got Good Friday from. And resurrection, that's where you got Easter from. On Sunday, Easter Sunday. So now they wanted a sign here. Verse 38. Verse 38. Okay, read it. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answer saying, Uh huh. Master, go ahead. we would see a sign from thee. So we want to see a sign from you. Go ahead. But he answered and said unto them, Uh huh. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. You know, don't nobody pay no attention to their sister and brother? He said, an evil, an adulterous generation seeking after a sign. Don't you know that the Lord says speaking in tongues is a sign? Not for the believers, but for the non-believers. Now you want me to be able to jump up and run across the top of this roster. 
before you believe that I have the Spirit of God in me. You want me to reach over here and touch this sister on the head and she shimmy and fall all on the floor? Yeah, the brother's full of the Holy Ghost. That don't have nothing to do with the Word of God. If the Lord tells you that prophecy is for believers, speaking in tongues for non-believers, he said, evil and adulterous generation look at sign. They got TVs and all it is about healing and all this. The Lord told Thomas, said, look, you see and you believe. Blessed are those that don't see and believe. You got to believe, sisters and brothers. The Bible says your faith is what's going to save you. Ain't that what saved them down in Egypt? What's wrong with just simply believing the Lord and doing what he said? So he said, evil and adulterous generation seek the sign. And let's see what that sign is. Go ahead and read. And there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. He said, I'm going to give you but one sign, the sign of the prophet Jonah. Go ahead and read. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Uh-huh. Now he said three days. And through the Lord know what he was doing. Believe me. Three nights in the whale's belly. Go ahead and read. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So that means he's going to be in his grave for three days and three nights. Now that is the sign that he is the Messiah, he is the anointed one, or he is the Christ. Yes. So now, if he died Good Friday, let me see now. Friday, so if he died Good Friday, he was in there Friday night, and he was in there Saturday night. I got me a problem here. Because now he's going to be in there Sunday night. You can't, you can't uh, compute that because now that means if that's the case, then he didn't get beyond Sunday morning resurrection happening. Right away, we have killed that claim out. See how simple it is when you just read and count? So in order for us to find out what day that he rose, we got to find out what day that he was killed. Prophets told you. Let's go into Daniel's the ninth chapter. Daniel's the ninth chapter. See, but nobody bothered to investigate Gentiles simply didn't have it, sisters and brothers, and I don't blame them for it. It is because the Lord gave that to us. This is our job to do this. We are the ones that really have made the error. Because if we had done right, everybody would have been recovered. Because the people wanted to follow us, and they did follow us. The book says Israel talked to wicked one they way. And you're wondering why that we have suffered so many things. Now it's 9 and 25. So we're talking, we talking the anointed one. We're talking Christ. We're talking Messiah. Because Messiah in Hebrew is the anointed one, and Christ in Greek is the anointed one. So we're talking Messiah, aren't we? We're talking Jesus. Verse 25. Daniel's 9, and we're going to start at verse 25. Okay, go ahead. Know therefore and understand uh -huh. that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Uh -huh. The streets shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Now that's another lesson. But, uh, but uh, out of Xerxes, Greek emperor gave the commandment to rebuild the temple and everything. That's it. From that time that command was given until Jesus come on the scene, that's Messiah, Messiah is a, a seven, three, three score and two weeks. Go ahead and read. 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. And when he get here, he going to be cut off. Go ahead and read. But not for himself. But not for himself. That means he going to die for somebody else. That's what cut off means. Go ahead and read. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Uh-huh. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. Go ahead. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Now, the reason they messed this up is because they go here and say that this is the seven-year tribulation. Do you see any tribulation here anywhere? No. The people of the prince, sisters and brothers, are, is, are, were the Romans. And after Jesus died, and he had done all that he's supposed to do, and the apostles that had run their stretch, then in 70 A.D., Titus, with the Roman army, Destroy Jerusalem down to the ground. 
But to let you know what Messiah is supposed to do, let's read a little more. Go ahead and read. 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's what he did. Jesus confirmed the covenant with many for one week. Galatians will give you that in the third chapter, but that's another lesson. Go ahead and read. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. In other words, he's going to stop animal sacrifice. Finish that verse. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now, once Jesus came and done his job, then there was no more reason for Jerusalem not to go into captivity and stay this time, sisters and brothers. Other well, scripture let you know that once that was done, it was all over with. Ezra and Nehemiah and them had to go back and rebuild the temple and restore the city because Jesus had to have some plan to come to fulfill prophecy. But after that, he left. But in the midst of the week, he called the sacrifices and the oblations to see. Let's see what happened when the sacrifices, what caused that. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. I could tell you, but we're going to read it. Hebrews chapter 10. In the midst of the week, sisters and brothers, we're going to see what he did to cause sacrifices and oblation to stop. That's what C says. Verse 1, Hebrews 10 and 1. Hebrews chapter 10, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. 10 and 1. Read it. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come. Uh -huh. Now look, when people read this, oh, we're talking about that commandments. Now, no, this is not the law. Of commandment, God's raw law, law of animal sacrifice. Start from the top. Go ahead. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come. Go ahead. And not the very image of the thing. Uh huh. Can never, with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually, make the comers there unto perfect. And you know, perfect means that's uh, give you enough what you need to become God, sister and brother. Yeah. So this law could not do it, even though it was offered year by year. Why couldn't they make the comers there unto perfect? Skip down to verse 4 and read it. Verse 4. Go ahead. For it is not possible uh -huh. that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Now, that's why it couldn't make it possible, uh, 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 perfect, because the blood of bulls and goats couldn't take away sin. Therefore, Jesus, the real sin offering, the real Lamb of God, had to come and die. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice uh -huh. and offerings thou wouldest not. Go ahead. But a body has thou prepared me. Now, what did Jesus need with a body? So, when Jesus came in the world, he said, Sacrifice and offer, you wouldest not. But a body you have prepared me. What did Jesus need with a body? Because Jesus was God before he became man. And now he's going back to being God. God and the angels are spirit beings, sisters and brothers. You can't kill spirit beings. The same Satan that beguiled Eve in the Garden of Eden is the one that the Lord going to put into the lake of fire after the white throne, or just prior, rather, to the white throne judgment. The same Gabriel that took the message to Daniels and the prophets is the one that brought the message to John, brought it to Mary, because he is the light bringer now. But they spirit being, they live forever. That's why the Lord created the lake of fire for these people, for these uh, uh, individuals. I can't kill you, boy, but I'm sure I'm going to make you pay forever. That's God's business, so I ain't going to say it's hard or easy. He said, but a body thou hast prepared me. Jesus needed a body that could die. Go ahead and read. Six. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Go ahead. Then said I, lo. I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, uh -huh. to do thy will, O God. See, and this is what people don't understand. This Bible is written about Jesus to do their will. We read some of it earlier. That lamb that was killed of one without blemish of the first year, that was Jesus. That blood that you took from that lamb and put over your doorpost, that represented the blood of Jesus. The whole Bible is written about Jesus. And everybody's ragging on him. I said, these people are crazy. My Israelite brother's ragging on him. The people that call themselves Christians are lying on it. Y'all better find somebody else to mess with. But I tell you all the time, you don't know Jesus. This is the guy that drowned the whole world. Jesus did. 
Out of the whole world, he only saved eight souls. Then he turned around and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for their behavior, which everybody thinks is good now. And he only saved Lot and his two daughters, really, because his wife looked back and turned her to a pillar of salt. This is a guy you don't mess with. They done made Jesus all fluffy and cuddly. He won't do no sin. He said, I create sin. Said he can evil come. See, see, he ain't no sinner, but he bring evil on the world. You understand what I'm saying? So they said he won't, no, Jesus won't do no sin, but he said he won't do evil. The Lord said, can evil come up on the city? And the Lord didn't bring it? No. That's why my brother told me years ago, especially when we got hot in heaven and uh, them other people started messing with me. Brother, don't you need a body, God? I said, look. I got them same angels that Elisha had. You understand? If, if the Lord don't want nobody to harm me, who can? But on the other hand, if he want me dead, who can protect me? I'm going to walk around with some people around me like I'm somebody. Give me a breath. I don't like people that much anyway. So he said, sacrifice and offering you did not. He said, I come in the volume of the books. Go ahead and read. Eight. Above when he says sacrifice and offering and burnt offering and offering for sin, uh -huh. thou wouldest not. Go ahead. Neither had pleasure therein. So you know, I, we know he didn't have no pleasure because they didn't do nothing. Go ahead and read. Which are offered by the law. That's the law of animal sacrifice. Go ahead and read. Then said he, lo. I come to do thy will, O God. Uh -huh. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Look, Israel, the covenant he made with Israel in the beginning, when Moses them day, Israel broke that covenant. Therefore, he said, I didn't regard them because they broke the covenant. So he took away that old covenant that he might establish the new covenant. You cannot be under the one uh, covenant, the old and the new. This is what people don't understand. The old covenant, the one that ministered was Levi. The new covenant, the one that ministered is Melchizedek. That's why I tell people all the time about the Catholic Church. I say they confused because they're Gentile. You cannot be under Jesus and have somebody come up to you with a boot with a little veil in it and say, forgive me, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. You understand what I'm saying? Because the boot and the veil is under Levi. The incense under Levi. The bell was supposed to be on the priest garments, little bells when you come up to do the altar. That's from Levi, sisters and brothers. But then when you're the priest, you know everybody error. I could tell them every error that you made. You know why? Because you took it from Levi. But since Jesus died on the cross, you don't go to the high priest no more. You don't have no high priest on the earth no more. You get on your knees to the east. I'm not saying he won't hear you from the west, yeah. from the north, and from the south. Yeah. But he did tell me that his eyes and his ears are going to be on that temple spot in Jerusalem. So why not hedge the back? He told me he's going to be listening to that spot. I'm going to pray to that spot, see if I can ricochet up to him. But he said, look. You didn't have no pleasure, so I took away the old and established the new. Go ahead and read. Ten. By the which will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So now we are sanctified. We are set apart by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Skip down to verse 10, or verse 18, rather, and read it. Now where remission of these is, Go ahead. there is no more offering for sin. Uh-huh. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Uh-huh. By a new and living way, which he have consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. So now, when Jesus died on the cross, most people don't pay no attention that the veil of the temple ripped. That was the end of animal sacrifice. Just like Daniel said, he should call the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. But the important part is, he said, what part of the week? The midst of the week. So that means that Jesus died in the midst of the week. So we're going to get us a midst of the week here. So we're going to get us a Thursday before Friday, and we're going to get us a Wednesday before Thursday, right? So now, <laughs> Jesus died on Wednesday, the midst of the week. He was in there Wednesday night. He was in there Thursday night. 
He was in now Friday night. And he was in now Thursday in the daytime. He was in now Friday in the daytime. And he was in now Saturday in the daytime. So we got one, two, three. Three days and three nights, just like the Lord said. And he rose on the Sabbath day just before Sabbath, before sundown. Occurred on you that it was actually going now to worship the rising of the sun. Not the son of God, but the sun. They even spell it, sunrise service, which we're going to observe on Easter Sunday. Think about it, sisters and brothers. He was gone. He rose Friday evening just about sundown because he couldn't go into another night. He couldn't break prophecy. He was gone. So Easter and Good Friday are error. Now let's go back. I'm going to point out one little thing about this before I take you into the other thing. Let's go into Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. This is what I tell people. You know what? People get... I like to argue and fight when you I said, why are you arguing and fighting? I'm reading the Bible. You say that you love the word of God. Why are you fighting me for? I ain't just standing here telling you what I believe. I said, let's read this. Let's read that. But people just ask. You know, you I, I don't know. I don't understand it. You know, like uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. Why is you fighting against a tradition I can read to you, show you that it's wrong? Nobody's condemning you. I'm trying to save you. You understand? I had people come, oh, Brother Boo, I wish I had found this earlier. I tell them about the parable of the Lord where he sent people in his vineyard. Some early in the morning, some come in the 11th hour. But they all get the same pay. So when you got here, it was the right time. That's the whole thing, sisters and brothers. So the Lord fixed this thing. Now, 23rd, and let's go back to we're going to start at verse 3. We're going to show you something here now. Why Jesus had to come out of that grave on the Sabbath day before sundown. I mean, not, it was not a something that just happened. It had to happen that way. This is what people don't understand. Things that the Lord calls have to happen that way. But being that nobody have no understanding, they don't know that. Verse 3. 23, and we're going to read verse 3. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, and we're going to read verse 3. Pay attention to what the Lord said. Go ahead and read. Six days shall work be done, uh -huh. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Go ahead. And holy convocation. Uh -huh. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. At the very top of the important feast, he gave you the most important one. He gave you the time that he gave man to exist. You're going to work six days, and on the seventh day is a day of rest. Now, when you go back to work, it is not that week. That week's gone. So you know, you're on the first day of something else. But on the seventh day, that's all man's got, sisters and brothers, from the time that the Lord gave man until the time of the Lord's Sabbath day in the white throne judgment, when it's over, it ain't going to be what, 7,000 years. He was, Brother Buddha, Earth is, uh, is 20 million years. I don't care if it's 20 trillion years old. The book said in the beginning God created heaven and earth. How long is in the beginning? And the Lord also told you that when he told his man, he gave him directive, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. But he didn't say it was plenished by man. Man didn't come into existence until Adam and Eve came into existence, sisters and brothers. See, the people don't pay no attention to what the book is saying here. I know it had to be uh, 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 something here before Adam because God had to have gas and oil for us to burn. That's why we got, what do you think we get the word fossilized or fossil fuel from? Old trees and old bones. That's why the dinosaur, they wasn't killed by a meteorite. The Lord did them like he showed us how he drowned them. Why? So you have something to burn, sisters and brothers. That's why you don't see no Tyrannosaurus Rex in the zoo over there. <laughs> you don't see no pterodactyl flying around. You understand? Because he was not in Adam's creation. But then that's another lesson. I'm about to get out of this because I got to get off in another thing. Skip down to verse 10. So this Sabbath day, God gave man seven days, sisters and brothers. Verse 10, go ahead. 
Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, uh -huh. When ye be coming to the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof. Go ahead. Then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Go ahead. And he shall wave the sheep before the Lord uh -huh. to be accepted for you. Now he got to wave it before the Lord to be accepted for you. Go ahead. On the morrow after the 